Hello everyone, this is Steve, uh, the classic comics man, talking at you from my Steve Keeter or Stephen Keeter or whatever that channel, Steve Keeter channel on YouTube. Used to have a classic comics man channel. Who knows, I might bring it back one of these days. It's just kind of a, you know, kind of complicated having two channels. One time I had like three, four channels. It was silly, you know, so everything's been condensed down to one channel and that's what you're watching now. But it's the class, let's say the classic comics man show, okay? And yeah, I'm redoing a video that I did yesterday because I, it was 30 minutes long. And already I've been rambling for an entire minute here, so that's the whole problem. I rambled for 30 minutes yesterday, and I want to condense this down. Who wants to sit through a 30-minute a video? You do? Okay, we'll do it again. Maybe I'll make an hour this time. But seriously, folks, now I'm watching. See, I'm already out of breath. I'm already out of breath. See, that's what happens. You start getting a little older, you know, and you talk and talk. Well, I'm watching the, the Pearls of Pauline, by golly, on my computer. Yep. I don't want to see words. I want to see action, folks. This is, these are uh, sound, uh, these are uh, not, uh, these are action-packed movies, not still pictures. Okay. Uh, yeah. So we saw a maid and a couple of guys, and it's all real blurry and everything. Clearly, this print is a copy of a copy of a copy of a copy, etc. on down the line, but I saw the entire serial from 1914 with Pearl White, The Pearls of Pauline on YouTube, and uh, I was able to download the entire thing to my computer. So cool, I can sit here and watch this silent movie uh, while I'm supposed to be talking to you. But seriously again, we got a few things to talk about, and uh, just to give you an idea, here we are in my bedroom, folks. Yep, it's my bedroom. You know that because there's a picture of me on the wall with uh, BB. Uh, yep, the woman I love, by golly. And here it looks like I'm, I'm proposing to her, but that we, we posed uh, for that picture, actually. But uh, but anyway, she is my fiance. But See, I digress all over the place. Okay, some of the things we're going to be talking about. Bill Shelley, Chuck Robinson, uh, The Beacon, BB and a monkey. Yep, BB and a monkey. Uh, there she is. Here's a script for BB and a monkey. It's a script I just wrote it, uh, for the new mantra. Uh, we're going to be talking about that too. Viral Hulk Bond. Yep, and uh, and other stuff, including Dago Cleo and his uh, zany uh, uh, online comic. We'll get to it, uh, Bernie. Uh, D Dago Cleo, that's, that's Bernie, but he's Dago Cleo on YouTube. You YouTube? YouTube. Anyway, but first, before we get zany, I want to get a little bit serious because I do want to talk about the passing of both uh, Bill Shelley and uh, Sam Gafford, uh, two of my great, two of our, two of our great friends. Uh, Bill Shelley, of course, has been around forever since the early days of comics fandom and uh, he published Sense of Wonder uh, back in the 60s, uh, and I had only recently, although I've known Bill Shelley uh, since the early 1970s, I only recently really got in touch with him when we were actually carrying on a conversation uh, online, and I sent him a lot of, uh, a bunch of my self-published stuff that he'd missed over the years, because he kind of, he kind of faded out from small press and uh, fanzine publishing and stuff in, in the 70s. He came back later. Uh, to write about uh, his years in comics fandom and published a bunch of great books uh, where he detailed uh, his adventures in the early days including this is a copy of the, of the first uh, version of Sense of Wonder A Life in Comic Fandom uh, by Bill Shelley and uh, this he rewrote this book uh, later um, well, actually, he added to it and uh, he added a, a whole basically a whole other book to this where he talked about uh, his uh, his personal life a little more, and um, anyway, I got this on eBay. Uh, but uh, Bill Shelley contributed to Comique, uh, Chuck Robinson's Comique, uh, and Chuck Robinson was the guy who really got me going in small press. Uh, really got me publishing uh, my my earliest uh, stuff of any substance. I, I published a couple of early fanzines, but uh, on my own. But until I met Chuck, I really was kind of aimless, didn't know what I was doing, and he. Uh, my books improved a lot um, from having met him, but Bill was involved in Chuck Robinson's comic uh, uh, from the very beginning. Uh, uh, Chuck published this in the late 60s and early 70s. This is Bill Shelley's cover for comic number nine of the O'Brien Gang, 
and here's a page from that issue, uh, the O'Brien Gang. Bill was a, a great creative artist, and um, this stuff was great, and it was originally published in Runny Purple Ditto, I know because I published that issue myself on my uh, my home uh, spun uh, my my Ditto machine, my Spirit Duplicator. Published uh, that issue of Comic uh, in my home, and um, well, anyway, Bill has done lots much to promote small press. And my last uh, classic comics man video, you may have seen it, was all about Bill and his book on James Warren. He wrote a lot of books, and. Uh, Nobody chronicled the history of, of uh, fandom better than Bill did, and nobody was more beloved uh, in small press and fandom uh, than Bill was. And uh, he passed away recently from a rare form of cancer that hit him all of a sudden, and we were all shocked and saddened to hear about this, and we miss him a lot. We miss him a lot. As I said, although we didn't correspond for all those years, uh, we really I really got to know him just recently. I knew of him, and we both contributed to Comic together, as I said, in those days. And I may have communicated with him once or twice back then, but only recently, I really got to know the guy. And it seemed like it was all of a sudden, you know, because it seemed like he had so many plans and so much going on. He was writing the new book, and all of a sudden, he's gone. So, very sad to report that, and he will always be remembered will long be remembered. Um, we love the guy. Um, also, uh, Sam Gafford passed away just recently. And if I can get past uh, the pearls of Pauline here. Uh, there she go. Pauline looks like she's in peril here. Let's see if we can uh, get rid of it. But uh, Sam Gafford, uh, I've known him for many years. And uh, Sam and I published some stuff together, including a Don Knotts uh, a tribute zine that we did together. The incredible Mr. Knotts. And somewhere on here, I've got the last thing that Sam did. Yeah, there's a picture of me and BB and my daughter Kathy, all smiles. Because we're talking about comics, so why wouldn't we be smiling? Ah, and while this is loading, um, there it is, Comic Book Crazy, the last thing that he published. But uh, Sam published Eternity and that The Damn Thing. It's called The Damn Thing, and he published, he, he was fascinated by the Jack the Ripper mythos, the story of Jack the Ripper, and did extensive research on his own, uh, trying to identify exactly who uh, this being was, this, this crazed murderer, uh, but it was a fascination that he had, that a lot of people have had, but he published a lot of comics over the years, and they were all uh, engrossing, fascinating, he was a great writer, an excellent artist, uh, his brother, you may have heard of his brother, Carl Gafford, who went to work as a colorist for uh, DC Comics, and uh, Carl Gafford was involved in small press back in the 60s and early 70s, and he, he created the BPP, the UFO Co-op, the United Fanzine Organization, which I just recently rejoined. Uh, but I digress again. We're talking about Sam. We love this guy. And again, he suddenly passed away, just suddenly passed away one day, and uh, we're all saddened to hear of it. And uh, But he was full of love for comics and comics fandom to the very end. And here he published his last book, Comic Book Crazy, was an examination of some of the really crazy stuff in comic books. Uh, let's, re let's reduce the size of this. This is huge. I'm going to get this smaller. There we go. So, Comic Book Crazy. Um, he, this one uh, dealt, this particular issue dealt with some of the crazy stuff in comics, including crazy apes, crazy apes, dumb bad guys, junk heap heroes, and uh, a lot of fun stuff in here, a lot of nostalgia. Uh, here's Batman getting married to uh, Batwoman, and here's the wedding of uh, Black Hawk and Lady Black Hawk. Uh, just uh, crazy things that were that were in comics. And here they go with lots of gorilla, uh, uh, gorilla in shadow comics, Gorgilla in uh, Tales to Astonish, Buster Crab fighting a gorilla, I am the Gorilla Man from uh, Tales to Astonish, and lots of other stuff. We're going to talk about gorillas this issue, and um, I think we just we just went by really quickly. Herbie the Fat Fury talk about zany comics, and here's Fruit Man. 
Fruit Man. A guy who had like uh, fruit like powers. That's right, fruit powers. Yep, no kidding, Fruit Man. Talking about strange stuff. Here he is, he turns himself into a banana. And he starts peeling himself. He says, oh, please close your eyes, dear reader. Fruit Man. Fruit Man really takes the uh, cake. That was a fruit cake, by golly. Ha, ha, ha. But, uh, okay. Yeah. Men died for my kisses. Calamity Jane. Well, darn. Yep, there she is. What a calamity. Um, I'm sorry. Um, but, but Bill has awakened my own sense of humor. I'm not Bill, but, um, Sam awakened my own, uh, sense of humor. The ten worst Marvel villains. I see already Stilt Man and, uh, who we got here? Stilt Man, sure enough, appeared in Daredevil. His biggest power was he could walk around on stilts. And, uh, yeah, let's go down here. The Matador. He looked like a bullfighter, the matador. Yep, he had a bullfighter's cape, by golly. What a powerful guy that was. Uh, the melter, he could melt stuff. And where was where, he at? The porcupine. He had uh, deadly quills that he could shoot out, and he actually walked around like this, striking fear into the part of all, uh, uh, part of, part of all uh, <laughs> porcupine haters. Yeah, so anyway, well, who's number one? Who is number one? The number one uh, weird villain, of course, Paste Pot Pete, who used to carry around his big uh, pot uh, full of paste. Later he became the Trapster, but at the beginning, Paste Pot Pete. That was his powers, that was his gimmick. He had a pot of uh, paste on him and a gun to shoot up, uh, shot up uh, paste, yep. So anyway, Sam was zany. So, well, Sam wasn't always zany, Sam was, but just a really smart guy, and I got the sniffles, folks. Sorry about that. But uh, just a great, great guy, a great friend. We loved him. Jim Maine was especially close to uh, Sam, and we miss him. We miss, we miss him a lot. And uh, yeah, so we miss Sam. We miss Bill, and I just wanted to say that. But we're gonna go on to uh, happier things, folks. Uh, because they would want us to do. They would want, want us to do that. They would want us to keep going and keep doing what we're doing. Keep talking about comics and small press and fantasy. All that sense of wonder that links us all together. That sense of wonder that brought us into the fantasy realm to begin with. Um, we're going to keep that going. And all the happiness that comics bring us. Uh, whether they're zany comics or, or whatever they are. The action, the adventure comics. Uh, what we love about being part of this community that um, from, that is uh, you know that loves to talk about, loves to write, loves to draw, loves to create fantasy stories, um, comics. Uh, we're gonna keep it going out of respect for our friends. By golly, we're gonna, we're gonna keep going. And uh, I did want to mention uh, my friend Dago Cleo. You may know him from YouTube. His real name is Bernie, and he has. He's got something going on. It's an online comic that he has created that uh, features um, real people. He has real people, friends and relatives, that are in his stories. This is the adventures of Super Nellie Bean, young heroine. There she is, a Super Nellie Bean. And uh, we can scroll down a little bit on this one. Whoop, where are we? Uh, here we go. Somebody's picking somebody's uh, pocket here. And it looks like Super Nelly Bean is there just in the nick of time to interfere with this. And here we got uh, Super Nelly Bean. Look at uh, uh, Bernie does a great job putting this stuff together. Uh, fate had it that I was flying by. Well, the road's just starting to fall. You know, the, the bridge is, is collapsing here. And there comes our Super Tweetness. Right, Super Tweetness. Our heroine is always there when help is needed. Well, look who got her before me. Well done, my little uh, whippersnapper. So, Super Tweetness and uh, Super Nelly Bean are there to save the day. And uh, <laughs> I think Bernie, uh, there to go. <laughs> Bernie, not only has is is he, is he got this zany online version, but he's, he's, he's either working on or, or has uh, now got a, uh, a print version of this. And so, uh, if you want to contact Bernie, uh, just uh, there are other banks getting robbed. You know, this 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 aggression shall not stand. You know this, right? Sure enough, uh, yeah. 
Yeah, there goes, uh, yeah, yeah. There, this, the superheroes in this story are not going to take this, like, pow, bam. Okay, so yeah, and on and on it goes. Um, but the great, the great special effects that Bernie put together. Uh, even though Super Nelly Bean can fly, uh, she prefers to fly, uh, to be on the back of this, this eagle. It's for a more dramatic effect, I guess, and uh, exciting. But I love what, uh, what Bernie's done with this stuff. Yeah. Reflecting glove, sending a ray back. She's got a reflecting glove. So uh, Night Shifter is this particular uh, villain, Night Shifter. And uh, uh, Super Nelly Bean is going to defeat her, and, and no problem, okay? And on and on and on. And uh, Bernie lives in Switzerland. So he's over there. He's been looking at my comics, and I've been looking at his and getting a real kick out of them. So, yeah, contact me if you want to know, uh, or just go to his channel, uh, uh, Dago Cleo, D-A-G-O-C-L-E-O, -E and uh, you can find uh, Bernie's work there. So, yeah, gotta love it, gotta love it. Meanwhile, we were talking about Chuck Robinson earlier, and uh, my early days of publishing, uh, my the third small press comic that I published, and one of the... Uh, the first, one of the, well, really, the first thing of really any real substance was kind of an imitation of comedy called Om. And the cover is by uh, Chuck Robinson here, uh, featuring my character uh, Nightman. And this one was published in 1973. So it's what? 73, 83, 93, 2003, 2013. He's 55 years ago. How long? Good gosh almighty, I've been publishing for a long time. Well, darn, I must be an old guy. But a kid at heart, by golly, and we're not going to stop. We're not going to stop till we croak. Yeah, so we got at least another 55 years to go. Maybe medical advances. I figure we'd be around maybe to 150, 200. So we got a lot more publishing to do. So I rejoined the uh, UFO, the United Fanzine Organization, uh, recently, which, as I said, sprang from the BPP, which is Blue Plaque Publications. If you look on the cover of Om Number One. Uh, we had a BPP symbol there. This was the last of the BPP zines uh, from the original group uh, created by Carl Gafford. Uh, uh, a little bit shortly after this, um, uh, as that group fell apart, I revived it under the name the United Fanzine Organization. That's, that's a whole history. I'm not going to stand here and, and tout myself how wonderful are my accomplishments, but yeah, it was a pretty darn good accomplishment, wasn't it? The, the biggest accomplishment was is that this group is still continues to this day under the chairmanship of J David Brandstetter. And uh, I have uh, actually officially rejoined. Uh, I, was, uh, I was an honorary member for years, so they were sending me the newsletter for free. But uh, I recently uh, rejoined um, because I've started publishing again. I hadn't published anything in 13 years, but now I'm back. And by the way, I'm back in touch with Tuck. With, uh, Tuck in, I can't even talk. Chuch, touch. With Chuck, Chuck with Touch. I'm in back into Chuck with Touch Robinson. Yeah. So anyway, there's a letter to Chuck, and I can't. I haven't got a stamp on me, so I got tried to borrow a stamp from my roommate, but he can't find his stamps, and just you know, things just don't always work. I gotta mail this. Letter. Chuck's not on the internet, okay? Is the point? But he's he's out there somewhere, and uh, he's gonna be contributing work to uh, the upcoming Mantra. Mantra is another one of my longest running zines, next to uh, um. And I'm working on a new issue of Mantra. So, yeah, Chuck's going to be involved in that. Uh, BB, a woman I love, is going to be involved in, in the sense that uh, I wrote a script just for her. Uh, she said she wanted to be in the comic. And I says, well, you got any ideas? She said, how about uh, doing something called BB and a Monkey? So I wrote a script. Here's the script. And I started drawing this thing. And this is where we are right now. Sure enough, BB and a Monkey. So yeah, this is something I'm working on uh, for the new uh, mantra, and a lot of other people have, have promised to contribute to that. Uh, gee whiz, uh, Doug Freeman's going to be along. Um, well, gee, what have I got? Uh, Larry Johnson's supposed to contribute something. Um, yeah, something by Larry Blake, Tony Lorenz. Um, Jim Maine is supposed to contribute something to that issue. Anthony Gray has, has, has knocked down a beautiful front cover for that issue. Um, there's also going to be some old, uh, some stuff that 
has been sitting around for quite a while that hasn't been published. Um, stuff from Joseph Shea and uh, Will Dockery and um, Mark Prosky. Uh, but uh, this new issue should be out early next year. In the meantime, I just published um, the Beacon Annual number one, uh, which is this. The Beacon Annual number one, uh, a full-size uh, comic. Uh, Larry Blake pretty much surprised me by doing the entire issue himself and sending it to me you know, with kind of like, hey, are you going to publish this or what? And the Beacon is <laughs> long-running character goes all the way back to um, and Mantra in my early days. And um, Larry uh, redid some of the old Beacon stories, and with some of his old villains like Chrome Dome here. I put an editorial on this thing, but Larry did most of the work, including uh, uh, revamping, re-illustrating some of the stories I wrote and some of the stories that other people wrote. And he just did a bang-up job, and he sent me this thing just in time for Christmas, okay? So I managed to get this thing published. And it's available right now. Uh, it's six dollars a copy. Yes, folks, I do accept PayPal. Um, you can send it uh, if if you want. Uh, you can uh, zap me something. Uh, zap me a message. Uh, Steve Keeter at gmail.com. Uh, but yeah, it's six dollars an issue. Or if you send me a personal message, I'll send you my uh, mailing address. Uh, so yeah, so that's available. It's my first uh, new comic in 13 years, and. I'm pretty happy so far with the response, it's been great. Uh, uh, not only is it uh, UFO zine, and I'm getting response uh, from the UFO members now, uh, but I'm also hearing from uh, the Collector's Club. Uh, the Collector's Club newsletter is available from Alan Sissom. Alan Sissom, Alan Sissom, who's doing a fine job, and now I'm a member of that group as well. Uh, and um, getting a nice response from people, so. the. Uh, the, uh, also, the Verl Holt Bond, Verl Bond is back, one of my old UFO buddies, he's back in the UFO and he's in the Collector's Club uh, also uh, in the newsletter, CCN newsletter, and uh, Verl sent me a copy of Defenders of Mars, uh, his new issue of Defenders of Mars, a great science fiction zine with terrific art by Verl, he has a, a great uh, grasp of uh, solid blacks and whites for, for emphasis and uh, a dynamic effect. Uh, this one says to Steve from Burl, 2019. Thanks, 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 Burl. I appreciate it. And it's a, it's an exciting story about war on Mars and a culture that exists on Mars and is under attack, defended by certain Earthlings or Terrans, as they call them, or uh, and also under attack by uh, a group of evil Terrans and. Um, I really like the last few pages of this. Ferrell pulls out the stops and does some really fine artwork. Uh, there's an action, there's a couple of pages of, of just solid action here that are really nice. Really nice. Great job by Ferrell on the story and on the artwork. So, yeah, just pulling out the stops. Great stuff. Um, once again, anything I mention in here, if you want uh, information on how to order it, just send me a, a personal message and I'll, I'll send that along to you. Uh, is there anything else I want to talk about? Uh, I made some notes here. It looks like we've covered just about everything. Uh, YouTube is changing its policy, has made uh, certain policy changes just lately that don't make any sense at all. Uh, now if you do videos for YouTube, they want you to state that the video is intended for children or not. It's either intended for kids or it's not intended for kids. Or your channel is, is aimed at kids or it's not. I don't know. It has something to do with, uh, I don't know, some branch of government and some belly acres out there fussing about, you know, they don't want kids getting content. Well, we don't want kids getting content that isn't intended for them either. But do I really have to, have to state this uh, for, my, for my channel? I don't know. YouTube isn't what it was. It used to be a lot of fun. Uh, Remember when there was a couple of guys named Chad and Steve who put YouTube together years ago. And I was there almost at the very beginning and um, we had a lot of fun back then, back in those days. Uh, uh, a lot of fun. Those were the days when uh, there was a lot of vloggers and 
and uh, uh, people were uh, doing collabs together and just having a great time. Uh, when Chad and Steve uh, sold sold out YouTube to what to Google, right? Uh, they Google pretty much ruined it. Took away everything that was kind of like small press. What if uh, small press comics were bought out by? you know, Disney, com uh, or Disney, yeah, like Disney's buying everything, and by DC Comics, or Marvel, you know, and then they made it into something that no longer was small press, all of a sudden it's mainstream, and it's all, and it's all about making money and stuff, it's not the same thing, um, we did it for fun back in those days, and now everything's so commercial, what the heck, but I'm still here, because uh, it still has some value. I can still post my videos. Remember, this is not intended for children, even though it's probably safe for children. But uh, just I'm saying this just because I get in trouble if I don't. So well, I'm playing with my zoom lens here. That's about it. Now I don't know how long this thing is, but I hope it's not 30 minutes like before. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this ready to post. Hope you guys have enjoyed looking at my my room. Yeah, it's a mess. It's a mess. Yeah, and there I am. There I am, looking really spiffy keen, right? Yeah. Oh, you want to see my little Christmas tree? Yeah, the place is a mess. This is a disaster. I'll be moving out of here soon and moving into a house, just so you know. Oh, a little teeny Christmas tree in the kitchen. Yeah. So, Merry Christmas and Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. And, uh... Hopefully, if I feel like doing another classic Comics Man video, well, well, it'll, it'll happen soon. In the meantime, keep doing comics, keep reading comics, keep creating comics, uh, keep enjoying comics, and uh, we'll talk about a lot more next time. Have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye.